February 18, 2002. They fled civil war. It was more than a war. It's not just killing, it's everything. Famine at refugee camps. If you refuse to give them food, you'll be killed. Ethnic cleansing. I'm a Bosnian whose friends and family were killed just because I'm a Muslim. And at a time when foreigners are sometimes viewed with suspicion, they have found work and a new home. I think in Burlington is a very nice place to live. It's a no trouble, no fighting, other kind of stuff. It doesn't matter what nationality you're from or what your name is, what religion. For young people, this is very good. And it's much more free, you're free more here. Tonight, open arms. Today's Ellis Island. From ABC News. This is Nightline. Substituting for Ted Koppel and reporting from Washington, Chris Bury. It is cold, rural, and perhaps best known for its maple syrup. In a state whose population is 96.8% white, the most colorful institution may well be Ben & Jerry's ice cream. So it may surprise you, as it did us, to learn that Vermont, one of the tiniest states, has among the biggest hearts when it comes to welcoming the world's refugees. In fact, since Vietnam, Vermont has become a haven for those fleeing war, famine, and atrocity. Sudan, Bosnia, Cambodia, name the hellhole of the last quarter century, and you will find a community of its refugees in Vermont. Working, going to school, putting down roots. Nearly 3,500 of them now call it home. But since September 11th, this nation of immigrants has begun to close the door on such refugees, even though none of them, as far as we know, has been implicated in the terrorist attacks. In Vermont, before September 11th, more than 200 refugees were allowed in every year. Since October, only 13 have been granted permission to relocate. Nationwide, the numbers are also expected to be down dramatically this year. For the 12 million refugees that the U.N. now estimates are running from war and hunger, the chances of settling in this country have been greatly reduced. Here's Nightline correspondent Dave Marish. The area is desert, actually, and dusty, windy. Abraham Awalich can remember Kakuma Camp in Kenya. He was in this U.N. refugee warehouse for nine years. There was not enough food in the camp. The locals, the Kenyan people, they were also angry. So they would want to get food from the refugees. And at that time, if you refuse to give them food, you will be killed or they shoot you. Owalich and his friend Alex Piao got out of Kakuma a year ago. But since September 11th, hundreds of their friends have been left behind, trapped by the Bush administration's decision temporarily to halt refugee resettlements. People are calling us where they do not be accepted. What are the reasons? We tell them we don't know anything. They told us about the arrangements for the refugees' arrival and what we could expect from the U.S. Rifat Muminovic is a Bosnian Muslim whose hometown is now Serb territory. He and his family have been living, surviving, he calls it, in this refugee camp outside Zagreb, Croatia. He's been ready to head for America for some time, but he, like so many at this camp, are caught in that post-9-11 stall. Many of his friends, he says, are worried. They're nervous. They're in suspense from not knowing. If you're waiting for something, every moment is like a long period of time. I know the feeling. Rifat Muminovic can't wait to get to Vermont. That's right, Vermont. At St. Michael's College, students are getting an education on the resettlement crisis and the 14 years of constant crisis that's been Alex Pial's flight from Sudan. They bomb even my school. So even one of my room or my classmate, we share with him together at the desk. We were playing in the yard. So he was shot. I rushed to hold him, to talk to him. 
They say it works up. It is something simple. Let us run away. Abraham Owalich followed that same path from Sudan to Ethiopia. He was seven. So it took me about eight hours to cross the Nile. So I, I got help from uh, canoe men, some people who make themselves fishermen. 17,000 children, many as young as three to six years old, started out from Sudan in 1987 and 88. But after a four month trek to Ethiopia and four years at a camp there, they were expelled. Months more walking back to Sudan and then on to Kenya, and only 12,000 survived. Nine years in Kakuma, and 3,600 were promised lives in America. Only a small minority have made it here so far, the lucky ones. Some people have known we have the lost boys from Sudan. We are not lost any longer. We are found. If we are lost, we are not in the bush, we are in the United States. You get home. Vermont, a small state, not diverse, the population as white as the winter landscape, seems an odd choice to welcome refugees from Africa and Southeast Asia and fractured Yugoslavia. But Vermont has been devoted from its very beginnings to the three things that refugees want, freedom, unity, and equality of opportunity. In the Vermont Constitution, adopted in 1777, slavery was abolished. The right to vote was given to all voters and not just to those who owned land. So two major differences from any of the other constitutions adopted in, in that particular era. I'm a Bosnian who lost her home. I'm a Bosnian who lost her country. I'm a Bosnian whose friends and family were killed just because I'm a Muslim. I'm a Bosnian, but I'm alive. This is who I am. Tough and independent, these new Vermonters, enrolled in Tom Smith's English as a Second Language course um, at the Community College of Vermont. I'm Bosnian, struggling through life, defending what is mine. The left your homeland, and I didn't have time to take nothing with me beside my children. But after that, I was lucky when I camped here. I find good people here. But when you come to Boman, if you stand just only from your apartment, you shake hand with somebody, you know there's a good smile, showing that you are in the good hand and you have a good security. If you ask something, even a ride, I need a ride, just where you can show me there's post office, where's there's bank, any kind of things, you'll get the help. So perhaps it should not be such a surprise that Vermont's largest city, Burlington, has become a major haven for refugees from all around the world. I think in Burlington is a very nice place to live. It's a no trouble, no fighting, other kind of stuff. <laughs> The community that got Vermont started as a new home for refugees came from Southeast Asia. By the time Andy Tai arrived in 1991, Burlington already had dozens of Vietnamese. Today, State Representative George Cross, who used to be the school superintendent in Winooski, says... And we're now into the second generation uh, in Winooski of, of Vietnamese uh, in our schools. Some of the older folks that came in the early, in, in mid-1980s, and, and they now have children in the school districts. My brother, he's been uh, finished high school on last year. I think this Burlington is good for, for, for go to school and that kind of stuff, too. As the children of the Vietnamese refugees of the 80s enter Burlington's public schools, they mingle with the children of the refugees of the 90s, the Bosnians. So far, we're told, so good. Vermont is good for refugees. And as you'll see, they are good for Vermont, too. This is ABC News Nightline, brought to you by Pfizer. We're Pfizer. We're looking for a cure for your father's Alzheimer's. 
your sister's heart condition, your best friend's diabetes. We're spending over $5 billion on research this year and have 12,000 scientists and health experts looking for the cures of the future. Why do we work so hard? Because we have fathers, sisters, and best friends too. Pfizer, life is our life's work. So, set up a department meeting for tomorrow and put in a call to the client, get them up to speed. Anything else? Here's a thought. Instead of saving money by not using paper, we could just go to Staples. Yeah, with Staples 365 savings, they compare prices and back it up with a 110% price match guarantee. I like that. Jot that down. Low prices on every item, every day. Staples 365 savings. Yeah, we've got that. Tomorrow, the extraordinary detail of events that led up to 9-11. The warning signs were there. Should the government have known more? Watch World News Tonight. The Saab 9-3. Exhilarating handling. Gripping traction control. And the addictive 205 horsepower turbo. Contact your Saab dealer for a test drive. Just don't get carried away. Right now, lease a Saab 93 SE 5 door starting at $299 a month for 36 months. For details, see your Saab dealer. Yes, it's always been my name from birth. Sam Champion is my real name. We do weather. That's what we do. Bill Evans is our morning weatherman. Lee Goldberg is our weekend. We've got 36 years of experience with this area. I think deep down inside, we're all kind of weather geeks. We love what we do. Weather is a breaking news story. You're making plans based on what we say. AccuWeather makes sure our forecast is better. We watch the weather every minute of the day. Follow us, and we'll let you know what to expect. Thousands of new refugees from places like Bosnia and Sudan have filled an important void in this small New England state, as Dave Marish explains in part two of his report. My father, uh, when a, as a little kid, came over after World War II from Belgium, and yes, I guess uh, he was a refugee. Cressy Manufacturing, the precision parts supplier Jeff Grunwald's father started, is one of Burlington, Vermont's leading employers of refugees. We employ approximately 34 refugees. The hiring started close to 20 years ago, when the first Vietnamese refugees came to town. Difficulty at first, uh, having Vietnam vets, um, working with um, other uh, individuals from Vietnam, uh, but eventually um, we got through that and uh, things have worked out very well since then. It's easier to get a job, easier to uh, get an education. Hakia Rizvanovic yeah. is one of Cressy's Bosnian brigade of refugees. He knows his starting pay was poor, but he says it's rising. You get promoted, you know, it doesn't matter what nationality you're from or what your name is, what religion, you know, they treat you as a person. You know. As a valuable resource, actually. Vermont in general is very rural, and it doesn't really have the allure for a lot of young people. Filling that hole in the hiring pool are refugees. We felt that we needed a, an edge in terms of trying to get stable employees. We were able to tap into the, the, the Bosnian community. Having done so, and the list of Bosnian names along his employees' coat rack tells you plenty. Tony Hell found he had great employees, many of whom needed help to speak and understand good English. I saw, what tense is that? I saw. Passed, no, okay. The state of Vermont underwrites these classes and offers English as a second language in elementary and high schools, colleges, churches and workplaces and it's amazing to just see that the the leap that they've been able to make using it so it's it's great the language barrier that was horrible um sometimes i just felt that i i i i'm not gonna make it screwing 
Kadina Malichbegovich's English obviously has made it fine. So fine, in fact, that she has co-authored a play with her fellow Bosnian refugee, Admir Dobratsa. There were approximately four million people living in Bosnia before the war. Nearly half of them left. It's about uh, Bosnians and their experience during the war and now after the war in a new country like the United States. She wants me to come and speak for her. My is not so good. The scene in which a young Bosnian refugee has to translate for his grandmother derives its humor from this being a trip to the gynecologist. Okay, and when was the last time you had your cycle? Because I put my cycle. Cycle? I told you. I don't understand what cycle means. When was the last time she had her bleeding? Bleeding? What a ticket on you. Okay, that's near. Oh. There is a situation when, <laughs> when we came to America, when the kids became adults. Younger refugees like Kadina and Admir are blunt about what they don't like about their new lives and about a new feeling that they picked up on after September 11th. People are just uh, a little more cautious, I would say. They, they, they tend to see all of it with different eyes. If you have an accent, if you, you know, uh, a little darker skinned or um, being a Muslim. Overall, the impact of 9-11 on refugee processing has been dramatic. They feel the chill in Zagreb at the Catholic Church's Office on Migration. There, even broken families are making little progress towards reunion. It used to be that we've been able to process the departure of maybe a thousand, a thousand two hundred people a month. Now we're doing maximum of a hundred people a week. I think it, that's exactly where we're losing this war. We are trying to defeat the terrorism in the world. Right now, what's happening, we are doing exactly what they want us to do, I think. That's what they want. They don't want us to function normally. They don't want us to serve others, to help needy. And that's, that's what we're doing at the moment. The Bush administration says the logjam is over and all refugees scheduled for resettlement will make it to America this year. They better, or someone will have to answer to Alex Pial. The situation where I was before, physically I can say it, I forgot it, but emotionally I did not forget it because I have my friend or my relatives or my body behind still yelling and still crying to me. Alex and Abraham Awalich are in America, where they have found a pattern for life that they can follow. And that's one of the things that we found here in the U.S. Opportunities are available. Whoever wanted to succeed in life must succeed. In Vermont, the process that built America is alive and well. Opportunities keep appearing. Refugees keep grabbing them. And the result is one success after another. The White House says it is determined that September 11th will have only a passing effect on this. I'm Dave Marish for Nightline in Burlington, Vermont. When we come back, helping refugees restart their lives in America in the wake of September 11th. If you missed a Nightline broadcast, or you want to watch when you want, log on to nightlineondemand.com. I'd heard stories, but I had to see it with my own eyes. I can't send it to you till I get to the hotel tonight. Can't get information to your co-workers, so you're to blame. Yeah, how did you know? May I? You need the Sprint PCS Clear Wireless Workplace, the most advanced wireless package customized for your company. On the only all-digital, all-PCS nationwide network built from the ground up. It'll clear up that forehead thing. Thanks. Excuse me, ma'am. Duty calls.
first reconfigurable luxury SUT. Cadillac Escalade EXT. Breakthrough. An evening in front of the fireplace can be so relaxing. But each year, there are thousands of reported chimney fires. Protect your home with CSL, the chimney sweeping log. It cleans your chimney while it burns. Inside your chimney walls, there's a constant buildup of highly flammable tar and creosote. The active minerals in CSL will dry out those dangerous deposits. Most of this dry, brittle material will then flake off harmlessly, making your next fire safer. So effective, burn it only once a year. CSL, the chimney sweeping log. Clean your chimney with the chimney sweeping log. Available at Home Depot. Jay Thomas, Jane Seymour, and a senator's confirmation. This will come as a terrible shock to you, but the people in government don't know everything. Politically incorrect, coming up. Why do we leave? Why do we keep coming back? Why do we travel to distant places and look for familiar faces? Why can't we stay connected yet be free? Now we can with M-Life, where we will be connected in new and better ways to the people and things we care about. Welcome to M-Life from AT&T Wireless. I'm here for the install. Hmm, I'm at your front door, sir. I'll tell you what, we'll meet you back there sometime between uh, 12 and 5. I always wanted to say that. The more powerful Acura RL. My guest tonight is Lavinia Limon, Executive Director of Immigration and Refugee Services of America. Ms. Limon, who headed the U.S. Office of Refugee Resettlement in the Clinton administration, joins us here in Washington. And shouldn't it be expected just in the name of prudence and security that these refugees are going to have a harder time getting into this country in the wake of September 11th? Well, it certainly makes sense. It's something that we had expected, that there would be a second look at the refugee program. We've seen that. We didn't really expect that it would have such a profound effect on the number of arrivals, however. Why shouldn't the U.S. be extraordinarily cautious and careful now when it comes to screening these refugees? No, we think they should be. And in fact, refugees have always been the most scrutinized, the most vetted of people coming to the United States. And we, uh, we certainly support the efforts that are being made to ensure that this program is not an avenue for some nefarious kind of activities. As you mentioned in your report, as far as we know, no refugees have ever been implicated in anything uh, regarding terrorism. And we believe that given that the United States only takes a half a percent of all the refu world refugees in the world today, that uh, it's not an avenue that people are really using for bad things. Who qualifies exactly as a refugee when compared for example, to other immigrants? Well, refugees, by definition, are victims of persecution due to their race, their religion, their political activities, their membership in an ethnic group. They are people fleeing from terror. And I assume there have to be great distinctions among them. For example, uh, the United States might be wary of refugees from Afghanistan and Pakistan right now, perhaps less so uh, for certain refugees from a place like Sudan. Well, since September 11th, the new security uh, vetting procedures does put more emphasis on people coming from places that uh, have a reputation for harboring terrorists. But I think that these are just levels of security checks. All refugees go through uh, extensive checks, and those who do come from different countries that we might be a little nervous about take a little bit longer. We have had reports uh, in the past of some refugees, for example, being part of death squads from places like Haiti, uh, places like uh, El Salvador, and uh, even, even Bosnia. So I'm, I'm wondering if this extra concern isn't, isn't really warranted right now. Well, those folks have come in under false pretenses, and certainly, hopefully, our ex extra scrutiny will keep those kinds of folks out. What the issue with them is under refugee law, people who have participated 
in any kind of oppression of other people are not qualified to come here as refugees. How long do you think it will be before this funnel starts to open up or do you see it as a lasting change in the wake of September 11th? Oh no, we have great hope. We think maybe in uh, three or four weeks that things might really break. You know, on September 11th there were 22,000 refugees already INS approved around the world and we expect they will all be coming. And we expect that the uh, Bush administration it has is good to its word and that all 70,000 will be coming. Lavinia Lamone, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Thank you. I'll be back in a moment with a word about a departed colleague. Tens of thousands of people continue to buy the Oldsmobile Alero. Is it because of our special bonus cash offer? Is it because of the five-year, 60,000-mile GM protection plan? Or is it because the Alero is so fun to drive? Yes. Are you in the market? Get in an Oldsmobile. Backed by GM. Get $2,002 bonus cash when you purchase or lease any new 2002 Oldsmobile. We understand. Dreams do not come with expiration dates. Emergencies? Never check your calendar. And life does not always stick to the game plan. We're household, and we understand the hopes and financial needs of everyday people. That's why for nearly 125 years, we've specialized in loans, credit, and understanding. Household, helping everyday people, every day. moment. This one has thousands per second. The new BMW 3 Series. Test drive the ultimate driving machine at your local BMW center. Why do we leave? Why do we keep coming back? Why do we travel to distant places and look for familiar faces? Why can't we stay connected? yet be free. Now we can with M-Life, where we will be connected in new and better ways to the people and things we care about. Welcome to M-Life from AT&T Wireless. Hi, can I get you a cup of coffee? Sure. It's time for the Team Dodge sales event, where the versatile Dodge Caravan comes with our powertrain pledge. Seven years or 100,000 miles of engine and transmission protection that you don't get from Ford, GM, Honda, or Toyota. Plus, get your choice of a cash allowance of $3,000 or 0% financing. Great products, great protection, great values. Right now, during the Team Dodge sales event. <laughs> We learned today of the passing of legendary newsman Howard K. Smith. He was one of the Murrow Boys, that pioneering team of CBS newsmen that Edward R. Murrow hired to cover World War II. This is Howard K. Smith reporting for the Combined American Networks. Howard traveled with Allied forces in Europe, covered Germany's surrender to Russia, and reported from the Nuremberg trials. Later, he moderated the first ever televised presidential debate between Richard Nixon and John F. Kennedy. In 1961, Howard K. Smith joined ABC News, where he covered civil rights, Vietnam, and national politics. He co-anchored ABC's evening news broadcast, first with Frank Reynolds and later Harry Reason. After he stepped down as anchor, he delivered commentaries until his retirement in 1978. Howard K. Smith, whose work set a lasting standard for its honesty, insight, and compassion, was 87. That's our report for tonight. I'm Chris Bury in Washington. For all of us here at ABC News, good night. This has been a presentation of ABC News. More Americans get their news from ABC News than from any other source. ABC wins first place for comedy. Atta girl. Oh. Score! Tuesday through Friday, it's the sports shows every single night. My wife and kids. Right then, according to Jim, <laughs> Drew Carey, <laughs> and who's lying? <laughs>
Starting Tuesday, these four winning comedies every night, only on ABC, your first place for comedy. W.E.B. Du Bois was often regarded as one of the most profound scholars of his time, as one of the founders of the NAACP.